Hey, it's Jeremy here. Today in this tutorial, I want to be showing you how to create this long shadow in Illustrator CC. You can see here, I've used it on some type and illustrations. You can use it on a lot of things. You can use it on icons, even logos. And this effect really works well if you're working with like bold headlines and type, or even like a poster or something like that. And you can use it for a range of designs. So using this effect is really going to make it pop or stand out and just sort of give that effect that there's a, a big light source like hitting the object and it's going to really make it look cool. So you can see you've just got these two examples here and what I'm using is this nice purple palette. You want to make sure that you've got some lighter colors and some darker shades as well or else the shadow won't look too good. So I'm going to go down to this artboard here. I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to start off by adding some type. So I'm going to press T for the type tool. I'm going to left click once and then what I'm going to do is use my selection tool and just scale this up. I'm going to just press the type tool and just type the letter A. And I'll change the color so we can see it. And I'm just going to scale that up. So you can see we're using Futura. I'm going to lock this background layer. And then we have this layer here. So first up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lighter color, this lighter purple. And I'm, what I'm going to do is press Control C and Control F. I'm gonna, that's going to copy it and paste it on top of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this one on top. So you can see I got the copy on top, it's locked. And we have this one on the bottom now. So what I'm going to do now with this one underneath the top A, I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. So it keeps the proportion and we want to go 45 degree angles. It should clip in. But if your guides aren't on and your, your settings are different, then you might have to change it. But now we've got these two letters here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both, press W for the blend tool, and I'm going to left click once and left click once on the other one. So you can see now it's made a blend. So what we can do now is if I press the blend tool by pressing W and hold Alt, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be Option. I'm going to left click once on the anywhere near the, near the blend of the letters and you'll get the box pop up, the blend options. So what we're going to do now is change some of these settings. So first up, we're going to press preview. We're going to change the orientation and we're going to leave it to the second option. I'm going to select spacing and click on specified steps. So now you can see the steps is at one. If we increase this, it's going to increase the amount of copies or steps from this point to the next point. And because it's a letter, it, co it duplicates that letter. So what we want to do is I'm going to type up 400 so the edges are not jaggedy. You can see that. We want it to be smooth as possible. So if I press OK, you can see now it's smoothed off. But if we zoom in, you can you can see it's completely not straight. So we'll fix that. And But you can see now if I move this around, you can see that that's the blend that happened. So in order for us to get fix this, this part here, we're just going to use the pen tool. I'm going to press P for the pen tool and you can see my smart guides are on and I'm going to find the corner and left click and we're literally just going to I'm just going to go to the artboard and we don't have to go all the way find this point here like that and I'll just connect it like that so now you can see we've got this piece here and what's that going to do is going to flatten out and straighten out the side so there's no jaggedy edges. So that's one one issue with the blend tool, but let me fix that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this object and these this object, and I'm going to change it to a darker color. So you want to make sure it's a darker shade. And you can see now you want to make sure you select both of them because one side will make a gradient. So that's sort of what I did here. I put like a lighter hue there, if you can see it. But it makes a gradient, so we don't want that. We want to make sure that this is this they're all the same color. So you can see that's the same color, and this is the same color now. So what I'm gonna do now is because we made this extra square or this rectangle here, we want to select these two shapes and we want to group it. So you can see that's all grouped now. And what I'm gonna do is make a clipping mask. So I'm gonna press M for the marquee tool or the rectangle tool. Going to draw a box on our artboard, right? So this box is on top of everything. I'm going to select this and hold shift and select the other object. We're going to go to object on the top left and then go down to clipping mask and click make. 
The shortcut for that is Control 7 or Command 7 if you're on a Mac. So if I click that, it should make a mask. And now the shadow is within the, that mask now. And now what I can do is go to Object, Arrange, and send it backwards. So this is going to send our mask behind our letter A here. So you can see that it's behind it. And now you can see we get this nice long shadow effect. So you can see I can zoom in. It's got the smooth outlines and it's got a cool effect. And you know, you can you can play around with the contrast and play around with the shading and we can add like a multiply as well to make it even more darker. So you can see that it goes darker. I can even change the background. So maybe I want to make it lighter. And then I'll go on the mask and multiply that. So I've just multiplied this the mask and it's multiplying this the purple color to get this darker purple, which is nice. Stands out even more. And maybe I want to change that to white. And you get like this cool effect. So yeah, that's how you add some a nice long shadow effect. And it's a it's a cool drop shadow that makes you know title stand out. It works well with typography, and you can do it on illustrations and logos, and it makes it look really cool. So yeah, hope you enjoy this tutorial. Leave a comment below if it was useful. Tell me what you want to see. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I put a lot of design content out and tutorials that were really going to help you out. So yeah, hope you have a good day.